How you been? How's quarantine been? <laughs> it's uh, it's been boring. We're uh, doing everything we can to you know keep ourselves busy, but uh, none of the guys in the band or anything have been able to see each other for at least a few weeks now. I'd say about three or so. Oh, and yeah. Actually, the last time we saw each other was like the day after our last show uh, in the middle of March. There. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what have you been doing to keep busy? Um, me and Pankus have been working on uh, tabbing out our entire last record. To uh, we're gonna, eventually our plan is to put out a tab book. We actually just put out one of the songs, made it available today for people to download and learn if they're so inclined. Um, yeah, man. But yeah, we're working on getting the rest of the record done to put out as well at some point. Sick. Yeah, uh, yeah I actually downloaded the tab, so I actually gave it a bit of a go earlier today. Awesome. So they yeah. work. The links and stuff mm -hmm. work. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll start off simple here. Um, what was your introduction to music? Did you grow in, up in you know a house of music? Did your parents play music a lot? or um, My parents parents always liked music there was always music in the house uh, my parents were never musicians themselves um but i remember a lot of um like bruce springsteen in the house my mom was a huge fan of him um she turned me on to some of the kind of like classic rock bands like tragically hip and stuff um it was actually my dad when i was like 10 showed me iron maiden uh, okay. the Beast for the first time and that's when it kind of clicked like wow I watched the the music video for Number of the Beast and it's like wow this is intense this is more the heaviest stuff I had been listening to at that point was like Linkin Park and stuff um, I yeah. was really into them for a while as a little kid but yeah once I kind of heard that like old school stuff I ended up starting there and kind of you know working forward as most people do to yeah yeah get to more modern and extreme type stuff Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. It's funny enough, I started with Linkin Park as well. What was your favorite album? Um, at the time, it was Minutes to Midnight because that was the current album at the time, like 07, 08 there when I was like eight or nine years old. Um, yeah. I remember I got that CD for Christmas one year. That was that was like the best present I had ever gotten at that point. I was super stoked on that. Um, but I, if I had to like look back at Linkin Park's discography, I would definitely say Hybrid Theory was probably the best one. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, you know when I when I first started, funny enough, my cousin he made me a mix CD, and it started it was like Molly Crew, it was Lincoln Park, it was Kill Switch Engage, Holy Diver, oh, and sick. a bunch of stuff like that. But before before that, it was mostly just like Kiss. I was yeah. very into Kiss, so yeah. I, yeah. I I I do remember my dad listening to some Kiss and stuff in the car when I was a kid, mm -hmm. make him turn on rock and roll all night and stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, Cool. Uh, what made you want to play bass? Uh, actually, it was around the same moment I kind of saw what uh, Steve Harris was doing in that uh, Maiden video when I was a little kid. Like, fuck, what's that? That's not quite a guitar. That's not the drums. What's he doing? He looks yeah. cool as hell doing whatever it is. And I kind of decided, yeah, that's when I eventually it was like a year or two after that that I decided I wanted to actually play music. Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of decided, yeah, I want to do that. I want to play bass. So, oh, so I was never uh, was never a guitar player right off the bat. I started with bass. Sweet. Have you ever tried to play guitar? Uh, yeah, I play a little bit of guitar. I'm pretty fucking terrible. Um, I'm a pretty big dude who's got giant hands, and I find they're uh, they it can get a little uncomfortable playing guitar, especially when I'm used to bass because it's just so much smaller. It, uh, but it's fun. Like I can write stuff for Truant and stuff on there, and you know, then show it to the other guys and they'll actually play it well. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so you play in a couple of bands, but let's start with Truant. Um, so you play in a band called Truant. You combine thrash, death, and groove. Yeah. Um, when did you guys start and how did you meet? We all went to high school together um, at Maple Ridge Secondary, uh, where... Some of us still live. We've kind of spread out through the Lower Mainland in recent years. But, um, yeah, we all went to high school together. I met Pankust, our lead guitar player, in grade 8. And I actually, my first ever interaction was because we had these, like, weird half lockers in high school. Okay. And he had the locker right below mine. So my first interaction with him was me pushing him out of my way and telling him to get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> and the poor kid 
oh man, uh, we ended up having, I think it was eighth grade band class together and we were both playing upright bass and, um, I kind of like, Hey man, you know, I'm really sorry about that. You know, that, that was, that wasn't cool. Um, are, are we good? And we ended up being good. It turns out he plays guitar. So we kind of became friends and we'd jam in my garage, like 13 years old or whatever, playing some Black Sabbath and Metallica songs with no drummer. And it was terrible. It was, <laughs> but you know, it was fun. And we yeah. uh, met Johnny like the next year. I think I had like a class with him where we sat next to each other and he really wanted to join our band. We had a different drummer playing with us in high school at the time. Um, but Johnny really wanted to join our band, so he took us up to his house, which was right by the school, and uh, showed us all the cool gear he had at the time. He had like a bunch of guitars because his dad was a guitar, bit of a guitar aficionado and collector. Um, he had this cool jam space. We're like, fuck, we should have this guy in our band. <laughs> so we we brought Johnny on board, and then later our drummer quit. So there was another band at our high school who was a couple years older than us, and we ended up snaking our current drummer, Nick, out from that band. And I stole him away as they were kind of graduating and breaking up and weren't really going to do anything anymore. Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of the origin story. And the four of us have kind of, you know, worked together since. So you guys uh, formed in high school. Do you guys play any sweet talent show gigs? or We used to have a battle of the bands in high school, actually. It was pretty tight. There was, um, there was a time when there were quite a few bands uh, active in our high school. Um, there was a lot of like pop punk and metalcore bands going on. Okay. And we, these weird little gangly kids coming into the first one when we were in like grade nine. Um, we played, I think we played two Rush songs, a Led Zeppelin cover and a Metallica song amongst all these like pop punk bands and metalcore bands that were actually playing originals. So we were, we were pretty looked down upon, uh, in the early days of doing stuff, but, uh, I don't know, we kept with it and I think we're the only band out of all those bands still going today. So worked out well in the end. That's awesome. See, yeah. you're lucky though. Cause when I was in high school, I was like the only metalhead kid. Yeah. The only one. Oh man. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine that. That's rough. Mm -hmm. No, it's funny because everyone thought I was a stoner. Everyone, some people thought I was a Satanist for some reason. It was, it oh was yeah, a, it was a time, right? So people always have their misconceptions. You know, we were all yeah. a bit outcasted ourselves, but luckily we had our little circle of people that we hung out with, and yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah, and you know what's funny? Not people, many people know this, but I actually had a band back in elementary school. Oh fuck and, yeah! Uh, fuck, that was rough. That was yeah. really bad. Uh, we did a talent show performance, and we were the first band on. And so the curtains opened up. We start playing. Our drummer's kit fell over. Oh, man. Right? <laughs> oh, I actually yeah. have a similar story. Um, I remember it was just me, Pankoost, and our drummer at the time in, like, the ninth grade. And we played a – it was like a Christmas assembly. Okay. And I, I borrowed a keyboard from – the uh, the band room at our high school and because we were playing Tom Sawyer and yeah. I was in the whole Getty Lee um, bass keys and I was singing actually which was yikes um, but we were in front of the whole school and um, I was playing this keyboard and as soon as I touched it for like the first note keyboard fell right over oh, and no. immediately at the same time my bass strap broke and fell <laughs> so it was that was I think like our first time ever playing in front of people and it was it was a traumatic experience yeah <laughs> in a sense it was yeah it was it was rough yeah. you probably invested in some uh some strap locks after that one huh oh 100 percent. yeah, yeah. That, that's always a wise move mm -hmm. no but I, oh i can top that you guys played a christmas assembly we played our grade seven graduation oh shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we were out of tune completely i had tuned my guitar oh, prior left it yeah. in the in the gym it's completely out of tune when yeah. i go to play it someone fucking sabotaged me i still think to this day you know so yeah. it yeah when well when you're that age you're okay you don't really think of those like small things <laughs> all right um all right, Truant is planning to head into the studio soon. Can you kind of, uh, you know, talk about a few details in regards to that? Or 
Uh, yeah, we're going to be making some like more official announcements in the near future, but um, it's been it's been delayed because of the uh, the whole virus situation and you know respecting social distancing and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, we were originally planning on going into the studio in May, maybe June, depending. Um, although that's probably being pushed back to more like end of summer, fall at this point. Yeah. Um, the songs are pretty much done. The music's mostly written. We're kind of adding like final details. Um, you know, Panku's writing all his leads, and uh, our drummer Nick is working on the lyrics uh, that are getting close to being done. The album's got kind of a theme to it, but I won't go into specifics on that yet. But um, it's not really like a like a concept record per se. But all the songs kind of play into a certain theme, and we're uh, we're really excited to see what people think about that. Gotcha. Nice, man. I don't know. I look forward to hearing it when uh, when it's all when it all comes out. So yeah, it's uh, we're really excited. It's we think it's our um, our most inspired work yet. Um, it's a lot different than what we've been doing before. We're definitely pushing a lot more technicality into it. It's more progressive. It's definitely a lot heavier. Definitely like falls more on the death metal side of things than on the thrash side. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're super stoked to get some stuff out. We've been playing a few of the songs live. We actually, uh, we were playing two new ones through our last tour and we debuted a third one at our last show before quarantine kind of shut everything down. Um, in March, we were able to play a new one. Nice. So your, your, your last tour that you did, you had toured with Liberation. How'd that go over? Oh uh, man, that was so much fun. And those guys are some of our best friends in the world. We actually um we went over to Victoria where they live to spend New Year's with them and hang okay. out. Um but that tour was a lot of fun. We uh we played there were some really great shows on that tour, some towns that really surprised us. There was some obviously, you know, being a small time touring band like us, you get some bunk shows, but they're still fun and the people that come out are still good. But yeah, it was overall great. We had so much fun and we uh we met a lot of really great people um it got some weird stories to come out of that one from certain places uh yeah this is uh it was a time and a half for sure can you share any of the stories or is that all all private oh um well our first night like really out of town because we had a couple cancellations happen where we ended up with like two days off almost right off the bat we played victoria then vancouver then we had two days off um, so on the second day off we had, we took off to get to Calgary where we were supposed to play on the first day of like the real tour, I guess. Uh, and we stopped in Revelstoke for the night. Um, and we parked at the skate park, uh, cause there was, it was public parking and, uh, Johnny, our vocalist guitar player and one of the dudes from Liberatia both wanted to skate. So they got their boards out and we were fucking around. We got some liquor and we were, you know. Having a good time. We were just partying it up. And yeah. uh, we ended up doing skateboard belly races, which um, basically entails, you know, riding around the skate park on your stomach on a board. And yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> just race. It was band versus band. So it was one dude from Truant, one dude from Liberatia, head to head. Um, and it was like the last round we did, I think it was Johnny versus Nick from Liberatia. And they. We were we were doing it where essentially you were taking off more and more clothes every time you'd have to go. So both of these fools were down to their underwear and skating around the park on their stomachs and yelling. We were super loud and drunk and obnoxious. It was like a Sunday night. Um, and the, somebody called the cops on us and they showed up and we had to... The, <laughs> the cops had to deal with these fools that were all shirtless in their underwear just... I'd imagine it was quite a sight for them, except for Pankust, who got away. He, okay, hap- yeah, yeah. he, hap- he happened to be taking a piss in the bushes over, uh, like, at the other end of the park when the cops showed up. So he just kind of sashayed his way into the bushes <laughs> and found a trail to take him out to the main road. So he got away. He escaped getting a ticket. But the rest of us all got tickets for that. So that was fun. Um, and then the next morning... Um, I won't, I won't name names here, so you can assume it's me if you want. Um, but we, all, we were all sleeping most nights when we didn't have a place to crash. We were sleeping in the back of Johnny's truck that we were touring in at the time. 
Um, we had bunks that we built. Two guys would sleep on top, one on the bottom and one guy on the back bench of the truck in the cab. And um, we had like a foam mattress on there. And upon waking up that following morning as we were about to leave to Calgary, one of us um, let a fart rip that uh, maybe – they trusted a little too much, and uh, <laughs> a particular guy shit himself. <laughs> so that was, that, was, that was a talking point for the rest of the tour. Um, cause <laughs> we, Starting we out had, strong. Oh, super strong. And we were fucking, he was trying to stuff the foam mattress from the back of the truck into this <laughs> tiny little garbage can in the park. <laughs> and <laughs> this park worker not knowing what the hell was going on, started yelling at him, like, hey, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, yeah, just, just put it in the back of my truck. Put it in the back of my truck. So he takes this shit-stained phone <laughs> and puts it in the back of this poor, like, park city worker's truck. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that, that, That's awesome. That's that hilarious. Was an interesting first night. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on. Um, okay, so you also play in a band called Holdout, which you label yeah. as Sad Punk. Yes. Now, uh, how did that come about? Um, well, we, uh, we kind of started jamming like a few years ago, actually, like around 2017 when Truant was first starting to play shows. Um, and it was Nick, our drummer, who asked me if uh, I wanted to come play with him and a really good buddy of ours from high school, Connor, um, who had written a few songs and was kind of trying to get his, get something off the ground, get a project going. So I agreed and we went and jammed and we were having fun. We actually ended up throwing a house party um, at a house Nick used to live in and we invited all our friends and we probably had like 50, 60 people crammed in this tiny little house. It was a lot of fun. Um, but we, we, um, yeah, we played like a whole bunch of pop punk covers and then the like small handful of originals that we had at the time. Okay. I think we played like an old Offspring song and like some Blink-182 and I think like a Nirvana song and stuff too. Um, like a bunch of 90s shit. Um, yeah, it was that was a lot of fun except I got absolutely hammered, like sloshed that night and ended up ruining the party by throwing up chicken chunks all over the patio. And that was super gross. But it was a good time. In hindsight, it was a lot of fun. Hey, man, it happens. It happens to the best of us, right? So. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we were kind of on and off um, jamming with that project. And then kind of towards the end of last year, we finally started getting serious. Um, we had written a bunch of songs and kind of started booking a few shows. We've only played, like, three gigs at this point. But they've okay. all gone over well. Um, and we recently added Johnny from Truant to play lead guitar. So it's now three quarters of Truant plus our buddy Connor. Um, nice. But yeah, it's it's a super fun project. Um, I'm really big into like Title Fight and Basement and Citizen, kind of like grungy pop punk bands like that. Okay. And that's kind of the style Holdout falls under. Also kind of almost bordering on hardcore sometimes in the stuff we're writing. Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's nice to get a different side of you out and have some fun. Um, and yeah, that project's a great way to do it. We have a really good time. Um, and yeah, hopefully once this whole quarantine mess blows over, we can do some more stuff with that as well because I'm really excited about that project. That's awesome, man. You, like before the uh, the whole quarantine thing happened, you guys had a show at CBDBs. Um, yeah. Now, that has that been like rescheduled? I saw it was postponed. It got postponed to May, but... If I'm being honest, it's probably not going to happen in May, and it's probably going to get postponed again. Yeah. Uh, uh, we postponed that. The guy that was organizing it postponed it, like, pretty much right when things started getting canceled. Uh, okay. when, everybody, when everybody was kind of optimistic that we'd be up and running again by, like, May, June, something like yeah. that. Um, and, yeah, he rescheduled it off the bat, but I don't think that's happening at this point. Hopefully it gets rescheduled later this year. I was really excited about that. We were playing with a lot of really cool local hardcore bands that I'm nice. really amped on. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, well, luckily, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, BC is doing pretty well with it right now. We're actually starting to flatten slightly. Yeah, that's what so, I saw. We're doing better than uh, anybody in Canada from what yeah. I saw. 
any other problem. Hopes high and keep distance. You know. Yeah, staying inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've barely been anywhere in the last several weeks. I think the longest adventure I've taken out of the house was to go uh, ship some merch orders. Like I did that yesterday. So that was that's the most I've been out of the house in the last like three weeks. No, that's relatable. I think the last thing I did was like last week and I went down to Deer Lake Park thinking, hey, maybe people will actually try distancing themselves. Everyone, there's groups of people. So I, like I left pretty yeah. quick. But yeah, you it's know. ridiculous. It, like and I can't imagine what it's like in other provinces right now. If we're the ones doing the best job of this at this point, because yeah, no kidding. like even just walking the it's like a 20 minute walk up to the post office from where I live. Like just walking up there and back, having to dip dodge so many groups of people walking about. Like, yeah, it's there's a lot of people not keeping their distance the way they should be. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, you know, it's unfortunate. Yeah, we would really like to uh, get things back to normal and start playing gigs yeah. again. So uh, stay sure. home, everybody. Exactly. Everybody misses shows. Don't be, don't ruin it for everybody. You know. Yeah. All right, moving on. All right. Um. All right. What was your first exposure to live music? What was your first concert? Um, fuck. Well, I think my first big concert was Rush in 2011 okay. on the it was Time Machine tour. Nice. Uh, yeah, I went saw them there at Rogers Arena. I've seen Rush like three times. I was able to see them, uh, and they're. To this day, they're my favorite band. I fucking love Rush so much. They have had such a huge influence on my life in general. Um, but yeah, that was an amazing show. I think my first concert at all was um, 5440. I think my parents took me to see them on Canada Day when I was okay. like a little kid. Yeah, so huh. I think 5440 and Biff Naked at some amphitheater in Surrey. That would have been, yeah, that would have been the first one ever. Nice. Uh, yeah, I've seen Biff Naked too. What do you think of her live? I honestly don't have too much recollection of uh, seeing her live, but I remember enjoying it. I was like eight or nine years old and I was having a good time. Was, yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. And, I, and I've seen Rush too. I think we both saw the R40 yeah. tour, right? Yeah, we yeah. were both that nice. tour, yeah. And uh, speaking of Rush, did you go to the Getty Lee signing at Metro no. Town? No, it, did. it was uh, it was too expensive. At yeah, the time. I didn't go I couldn't, either. I, I couldn't either. afford it. I would have loved to, but yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man. All right, next one. All right, what was your first exposure to local music? Your first local show, or your first time hearing a local band? The first exposure, I think it was when we played our first ever ad stock in okay. 2015. Um, yeah, when we were still in high school, we played with um, a bunch of bands. There were like some ska bands and some like punk bands and stuff. But the bands that really gripped us was we played with The Hallowed Catharsis and Unbeheld. Yeah. And that, those bands absolutely blew us away. And we're like, holy fuck, this is what bands from here sound like? Like, Jesus, we got to figure it out. And that's kind of the, the first step we took in from being more of a like kind of hard rock metal band into like you know actually keeping up with the times and yeah and you you guys pretty much played ad stock every year since then all right yeah um i don't think we've missed one since from 2015 to 2019 we played that fest every year nice. um it's awesome because they were all about giving kind of the younger bands um who didn't really have a lot of experience playing live a chance Okay. And they would, they would book some bigger local bands to kind of head it up, like Ninja Spy played a bunch of times. And oh, yeah. Isis and, yeah, and it's been cool watching ourselves kind of move up the ranks from, like, first-timers, you know, playing our first, like, real shows outside of, like, a high school sort of setting into, into being, like, the headliners, uh, or at least, like, second from the top build. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's a really cool, really cool thing to look back on for us kind of a marker of our growth as a band yeah for sure you guys have blown up really fast actually um it's, it's been that's awesome that's it, it's awesome. been incredible um it's we've already gone a lot farther than we ever really dreamed of going uh we didn't really know what we were going to do with this band but it 
people, at least some people seem to be enjoying what we're doing. So we're going to, we're going to keep doing it and progressing and we're still, we're having fun. So we're not slowing down anytime soon. Yeah. Although well, I guess we're things... kind of slowed down right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, when things get back to normal, you guys, have you guys even, have you guys ever played a headlining show in Vancouver? Um, we did once at the end of 2017. I think we headlined a show, although we pretty much headlined by accident. It was like one of those wheel of metal shows where you spin the wheel to decide the order of the bands that play. Okay. Um, yeah, and we ended up playing last that night. But we we haven't headlined Vancouver for some reason. Um, we like we've been offered a bunch of headliner shows, but they're never really quite ones that we feel would be worth it for us to take, or they don't line up with our schedule at the time. Yeah, um, yeah, they it just hasn't worked out. We've headlined a bunch of shows elsewhere in BC, Alberta, and a lot. We've headlined a lot in Kelowna. Um, we've got mm -hmm. quite a bit of a following out there. Um, yeah, we've we've headlined basically everything except Vancouver. Huh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. But uh, speaking of Kelowna, you hear that Munin's closed? Yeah, that's a real bummer. We we loved that spot. That was uh, that was one of our favorite venues to play. Like top three for sure. Yeah. Uh, we we played our first ever sold out headliner show there is, last year. I think it was St. Patrick's weekend last year. We went up there with our friends in uh, Technical Damage. Actually, you're wearing their shirt there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we we went up there because we did three shows with them last year. We did two shows on the island and the one in Kelowna. And, yeah, yeah we played our – it was our first time headlining Kelowna. I think the it was our second time overall playing there. We had, like, opened a show there last time. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was insane. We sold the place out, oversold it, actually. It was, it was amazing. That was – so, and uh, of all the nights that he could have done it, like two days before we uh, went out there, Johnny fucked up his wrist and sprained it uh, in a snowboarding accident. So he wasn't playing guitar; he was just front man in it. And uh, it was still one of the one of the most fun shows we've ever played. It was it was a great time. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I've been to Munins a few times myself. Funny enough, before I turned nineteen, because again, Vancouver's all ages scene is shit. We have oh nothing God, really, dude. right? So um, yeah, it's like for metal, it's ridiculous how little all ages shit we have. Hardcore is really good about it. Um, even still, now that um, now that three through three is closed, which fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen all the hardcore shows that I've seen pop up since three through three closed have still been all ages. So it kind of leaves me wondering why the metal scene here can't really figure it out. But I guess so much of the revenue in metal shows is based on bar sales and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. So it's understandable, uh, but it would be nice to have another place like 333 where, you know, you can have kids come to the shows. I was going to shows at 333 when I was, like, 17 and stuff. And yeah, man, a, same here. Same yeah, here. that was a catalyst for me to actually kind of get into the into the scene and stuff. Yeah. I don't know, it's funny. You know where I used to go for all-ages shows? There used to be a place in Surrey called Olympia Pizza. Oh, man, uh, I remember that place, yeah. Yeah, have you ever been, did you ever get a chance to go check that place out or? Um, I don't think I did. Um, our, our buddy Connor, who's the singer for Holdout, he used to be in a metalcore band when we were in high school, and they played a show there. Um, yeah, like 2014, 15, something like that. Uh, they okay. played with um, of Modern Architecture, and I can't what remember is why. This band called Lost in Reverie. Okay, I don't think I've seen them. Yeah, but, they uh, were they were like like a total Rise Records style scene core band from. Oh like, really? Okay. That era, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, they played a show there with um of Modern Architecture, who we've in Truant have actually played several shows with now, and uh, they're good buddies of ours. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some crazy shows. Like I've seen some shows where like it was wall to wall packed. Uh, oh, yeah. I saw Tyrant's Blood and the Goalers and Obsidian play there once. This oh, was a long time ago. Dollars Actually, more. I don't think Tyrant's Blood was allowed back after that show. Oh, really? Because they, they were pretty much shit talking like the, the the pizza guy, like the guy who was cooking and everything. Oh, yeah, well, I don't know. It was, it, something went on with that, but yeah, yeah, you don't want to shit talk the venue staff. No, no. But yeah, unfortunately, turnouts weren't big enough, and shows kind of just dwindled away. Yeah, and, you know, kind of 
changed management and it became a place for only rap shows and i remember uh, when they changed the management there because i tried to book a show there to uh in like 2015 16 something like that um and they were asking for like three grand up front to book a show um, yeah it turned into a pay-to-play venue yeah it was just not feasible in the slightest for anybody no for sure but uh yeah I don't know. Vancouver needs to do something with the Vancouver, like with the uh, local scene, with the all ages shows. Yeah, it would be cool to see some metal shows get booked at CBDBs. Um, I think they'd they'd have to upgrade their sound system a bit for some of the bands who have a little more a uh, little more of an intense setup. But it's a really cool spot, um, really rad punk house type spot. Um, yeah, we played a gig there with Holdout in February, and it was it was a great show. We had a lot of fun. Um, huh. Yeah, that venue's rad. Uh, what did you think of that uh, Red Gate venue that uh, Angel Maker played? I unfortunately didn't make that show, but uh... oh, yeah, um, that show was that show was great. That place is awesome. And um, I was talking to Kim, who works with Mayo at the Invisible Orange, um, and it sounds like they're gonna maybe try to book some more shows there, from what she told me. Uh, so I hope that happens. Uh, because that's a really cool all ages spot. Um, sounds decent. It's a big space. It's like comparable to three 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 size type space. Maybe even a little bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a super cool spot, and I'd like to see more shows there. Awesome. All right, this is kind of getting off track, so I'm gonna continue with the next question. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. Do you have a favorite show you've ever played? Hmm. Think about that, because. We've we've played a lot of shows that uh, we walked off stage thinking like, damn, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, say if I had to give like a like a top three, I would say um, our album release show uh, it's September twenty eighteen uh, when we put out our last EP. Um, the St. Patrick's Day show we headlined in Kelowna and opening for Voivod at Modified Ghost Fest. Yeah, that was a sick show. Yeah, actually, um, I'll also put Armstrong, Armstrong Metal Fest from last year in there as well. Nice. That was that was rad. Oh, fuck, I'm going to make it a top five. Okanagan Disintegration, uh, also a Kelowna show. That was an amazing show as well. Nice. I don't know, uh, have you been to many uh, Canadian festivals? I have been to Armstrong and what's that other one? Metal Ocalyptic I went in like 2018. Uh, I haven't been to Loud as Hell yet, although fingers crossed, hoping that happens because we are set to play that festival in August. Um, what else? I, I never got up to Metallion before they stopped doing their festival. Um, so yeah, really just Armstrong and the other one there. No, Armstrong has pretty much become a yearly tradition for me. I think my yeah. first year was 2017. Oh, hell yeah. Was that the year um, was that the year Revocation headline? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, nice. No, that was a great lineup. Uh, and I've done Loud as Hell once. Oh, okay. Loud as Hell when Ninja Spy was the Saturday night headliner, I believe. Sick. Yeah. So we ended up going up. I ended up going up with them and documenting their tour and everything. And Sick. So that was what cool. year was that? That was 20, 2018. I think 2018. Uh, was that the year fit for an autopsy headline? Yes. Yeah. Sick. Uh, with Arc Spire and uh, yeah. And, uh, I'm blanking on the other bands, but it was a good lineup. Sarah Longfield and oh yeah, because she was on Arc Spire's tour package. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we caught that tour in Vancouver. Nice. They, yeah. That that would have been a sick fest to go to, um, but we're hoping everything works out so we can still play there this year and be able to check it out. Yeah, it's a long festival; it's like four days. Yeah, like I don't, that, I don't yeah. know if we're gonna be able to make it up for the whole thing because we're gonna have to drive all the way from Vancouver there. We're we're hoping to get a show booked, like in the in between time somewhere in the Okanagan. But uh, with this whole virus shit, people aren't really stoked on booking shows this summer, so it's been yeah. rather difficult. So, yeah, we're going to have to make the drive straight, and I don't know if we'll be there for the whole festival. We are playing on the Sunday, so at the very least, I hope we get there and be able to check out most of the bands Saturday and stuff. Mm-hmm. 
No, man. Hopefully all goes well. But, like, I, I have a good feeling that things will start to, like, even out in the next couple months at least, you know? I, so. I really hope so, man. I don't want to see any of the festivals get axed. We were, we were going to go to um, a festival in Calgary. Actually, this month it would have been, like, next weekend. Um, we were going to go to Wild Rose Hardcore Fest. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, that got canceled. Um, so we're holding out for Armstrong. We're hoping that happens. We're not playing this year. Uh, we played last year, but we, we loved it. So we were going to go back anyways. Um, but we're really holding out for loud as hell because we'd really like to play that fest and get back out to Alberta since we don't really have any, uh, any tour plans out there this year. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, any hobbies that you have on the side when you're not writing or recording music or playing shows? Um, for the most part, outside of music, I just hang out with my dog. That's, that's really kind of the biggest thing. Um, I don't know. I like spending time with animals. Uh, so hanging out with my dog, I was, uh, I was outside in the middle of the night last night and some, uh, some random neighborhood cat pulled up and hung out with me for like an hour. So uh, yeah, animals, uh, we, everybody else has their own hobbies. The guys love video games and Johnny's a big skateboarder. Panku's really good with computers and tech and stuff, so he likes to fuck around with that. And yeah, if, if we're uh, if we're not playing shows or writing or recording, we're probably hanging out together and you know whooping it up, doing stupid teenager shit. <laughs> nice. What's your dog's name? Getty, as in Getty Lee from Rush. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Now we're on to listener questions, and we have one listener question. One um, listener question. We have a listener right. question. This comes from Peter Riccafrente. I'm probably butchering that. I, I <laughs> um, think you actually nailed it right. I, I do know Peter, and he. Uh, I think Frente is how you pronounce it, because I know he gave me shit for pronouncing it Riccafrente. Okay. <laughs> so I, right. I, think, I think you're right. <laughs> Nice. All right. So what he asks is like, what would be your dream tour of three to five bands? Ooh. Hmm. I think all the guys in Truant have pretty eclectic taste and we all listen to kind of different stuff from each other for a good chunk of the time. But like kind of as a collective, the four of us, I think a dream tour lineup we could agree on would be like Gojira headliner with Cattle Decap, Rivers of Nile, Fit for an Autopsy, and Arch Spire. Replication too, if I didn't nice. already say replication. Yeah. That would yeah. that would kind of be the that would be the dream. And we could be the lowly opener that nobody remembers after getting their <laughs> their face pounded in by a lineup that ridiculously good. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's a great lineup. All right. Now here are just some fun random questions that I came up with. All, All right. right. And these are like rapid fire questions. Don't even think about it. Just answer. Okay. okay rapid right. fire. Let's rapid do it. fire. Revocation or arcs fire? Revocation, but All right. just barely. Just barely? All right. Just barely. Guilty pleasure band. Um I don't know. I don't think I have a guilty pleasure band per se, but I fucking love Adele. Okay. That's actually that's surprising. Cool. All right. Uh, favorite show you've been to? This can be Ooh. local or big show. Ooh, I have seen so many shows. Um, oh, I'm gonna go with Rush R40 tour. Um, also the first time I saw Gojira. Um, I think locally, my like the favorite best lineup I've seen was Archspire. Neck of the Woods, Zool, and Blackwater Burial. Yeah, that was a sick show. 2018, yeah, that show was incredible. Nice. All right. Uh, Favorite movie? Ooh. um, I don't know if I have a number one favorite movie of all time, but... Okay, top five. You you have five. Okay. Um, No particular order. I'm a really big fan of, like, stupid stupid like adult comedies so like recently in quarantine i've watched um i've rewatched super bad classic Step brothers yeah um 
Wedding Crashers. Uh, fuck, man, I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, just basically any stupid R-rated comedy like that. Uh, that'll that'll get me going. Nice, nice. Yeah. You know, it's funny. When I was in Vegas, I went to I went on a trip to Vegas when I was younger, and I found yeah. a fake McLovin ID. And oh fuck yeah! <laughs> I kept that in my wallet for years. It's the funniest yeah. thing. Yeah, it's I love sick. that I, movie so much. I remember I, I had a coworker at a job I used to work at. Um, he was like eighteen. I think I was a year older than him, and he asked me to buy him some beer after work, and he gave me his wallet, and he had a fake McLovin ID <laughs> inside. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm, you know I'm using this at the counter, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, two more for you. All right. All right, beer or whiskey? Whiskey. Whiskey? Do you have a yeah. preference? Um, I generally go with Jack Daniels. I'm a fan of the cheap stuff. Uh, but, like, I'll, I'll, I'll drink some bourbon if I'm feeling fancy. Nice. Yeah. All right, last one. Current favorite bass player. Current favorite bass player. Oh fuck. Um, man, I can't remember his name, but um, the dude from Rivers of Nile is fucking intense. Um, you don't you don't particularly hear it a lot on the record, but when you watch his like playthrough videos and their music videos and their shows and stuff. He's doing some insane things. His uh, his tapping is incredible, and that's something I've been working to improve upon myself. Um, on a local scale, though, I think Jacob from Blackwater Burial. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. he's incredible. No, good choices, good choices. Anyway, that's all. That's about all I have for you. So thanks for yeah. doing the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries, man. Thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun.